So in production today, I'm going to carry on with the Photoshop document that I started making for Padero the other day, and we're going to practice turning this into a working web page. So I'm going to cover some absolute basics, and I'm also going to introduce to you something a bit more advanced. So just have a quick look at our image. We've got a main central column, a plain grey background, the, the main content area is a box there. Within it, it's got a header, it's got a, an image, it's going to have a navigation bar, then some content, and finally it's going to have a footer. So if we can do all that in this session, that could be a really good start. So the way that I start with web page production is always to do the HTML first. I say, what's the page constructed of logically? So I'm just going to go right ahead and do that. So within my body tag, the visible area of the page, what have I got? So my background doesn't need anything, because that's going to be the body of the page itself. Then I'm going to have my main central area. Now the way I would normally do that is with a div class equals container. And that's going to specify the width and all those general areas of my page. So I'm going to add myself a little comment there so that I can always find the, the end of this, the matching closing div tag for that starting div tag. So within my container, what have I got? Well, I'm going to have a my white area, but that may be the container itself. Let's see how we get on with that. So I've certainly got a header. And then that's going to be followed by the picture of the grass. Now, what would we call that? We need to give it a name that's that's meaningful, that doesn't describe the content of it as such, but the meaning, the structural meaning of that section on the page. So we might call it splash. We might call it a banner. I'll call it banner for now. Following that, we're going to have some navigation. Now, that will probably be an unordered list because, as we've seen in the other design, this is going to have some tabs in it. And because those tabs are related to each other, they're, they're literally a list of links. So it should be an unordered list. And I'm going to try just styling this as an unordered list. I'm going to call it main nav to distinguish it from any other nav later on. And I'm going to put one empty list item in there for now. It's going to have nothing in it. So then after that we're going to have some content, probably with some columns in. So I'll, I'll add my columns. A main column and a secondary column. And then following both, all of those columns, I'm going to have my footer. And that should be all the markup that I need to make this page. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and style the page. So I've defined a style sheet here. It's in the same directory as the index page. So let's create a new file. And I'm going to save it and call it styles.css. And this is where I'm going to put my styles. So where do we start? We always start from the outside in. So I'm literally going to start with the body tag. And it's going to have a background colour. So I need to grab that colour in Photoshop. So I go to the eyedropper tool. And I need to change my settings here. Palette options. To web colour. I'll change them both to web colour. That's what I tend to do. And that's going to be duty D2, D2. So the, the hash sign or pound sign there indicates that the following code is a hex code. You can put RGB values in other ways, but this is the one that I prefer. So let's see if our page actually exists. Okay, there we go. Now, what you can see here is the first bullet point, and that's the bullet point that corresponds to this empty list item. That's the only thing that's visible on the page. The rest of it is just pure structure. Okay, so what's next? We've got our container. And it's a div. I 
this is going to be white and it's also going to have a particular width so let's say I'm going to set, set it to 760 pixels for now ok so we've got a container there but it's not centered on the page so I, the way to center that there's a few ways of doing it, this is the old fashioned way text align center on the body itself and also adding margin auto on the container and now that's centered now I've got a gap here at the at the top above my container and that's bigger than this actual gap so in Photoshop if I select my marquee tool I can then measure how big that gap is just by selecting then if I look in the info tab here it's height 7 so I'm going to set margin to 0 just for good measure and the padding within my body is going to be 7 pixels and then 0 everywhere else in fact I might as well have 7 pixels at the bottom as well so I can just use the shorthand where the first value is for top and bottom and the other values for left and right ok now that's actually gone bigger so I need to make sure that the margin above and below this container is 0 as well and that it's just auto to the left and right ok so I've clearly got some issue going on with my page why I've got more space at the top than I thought so what else have we got in here it's nothing it's literally div class equals container straight within the body so what else could be going on I'm just going to try putting some more content inside my container and for some reason now that I've put some content in it's fixed the issue don't ask me why I don't know it's just a trick that comes with some experience okay but that's going to fix itself in a minute when we add some more content in there okay so I've got my header so my header has actually got a subtle gradient in it for now I'm just going to fill it with a, a solid colour I'll take something like the mid colour which is oh, 333 that's handy so my header and my background 333 and I also want it to have a fixed height so the way I'm going to do that is simply to measure it I've gone one pixel too far so I just adjust and that's height 92 pixels Let's see what happens there. Okay, that's so obviously gone underneath here is my container, so let's try removing that now. There we go, so we've got a, a flat grey header in there. I'll come back to that later. So the next thing is this image of the grass. Now, there's an important question here Am I going to put that grass in there as an image, or am I going to put it in there as a background image? And the difference is, for writing semantic code, a background image doesn't exist on the page. A background image is styling only. An image tag represents an image that is actually on the page. It belongs on the page. So an image tag should represent content imagery. The question is, is this background picture content imagery or decorative imagery? Now, I would vote for decorative imagery. And that would mean that I don't need to repeat the image on every single page so I'm just going to maximize this I'm going to try doing a control click on my mask which is this main content copy now if I hold the control key and click that layer it selected that layer now I can see that it's got a bit too much on the top so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that pixel by pixel so I've selected the single row marquee tool. The way to change these tools is just to hold it down until the tool options pop up. And I'm going to hold, in Windows, I'm going to hold the Alt key. And Alt removes something from a selection, so you can use your selection tools 
you can use even a different variety of selection tools and you can add to selections and remove so the alt key you see it's got a little minus sign there if I click that's removing one pixel row at a time and there I've got my whole picture of my grass yep that looks good what I did there was the same as clicking actual pixels so I'm going to do edit copy merged I'm going to make a new file and it's automatically set the width and height to the clipboard I'm going to paste my copied image in and then I'm going to do file save for web this is where I've got my little gallery of different options so I can see here's a low quality JPEG at the bottom right that's a quality of 10 out of 100 and that's going to produce a 21k file this PNG 24 that's crazy it's far too far too big at half a meg but um, this JPEG you see is uh, a little bit blurry on some of this detail here's a JPEG at 30 quality it's double the size in file size but the the quality is acceptable so I think I'm going to go with this one I'm going to save it into the same directory and I'm going to call it grass field I'm going to copy the file name there because I know I'm going to need to refer to it in a second in my CSS so I'll save that out go back to my image and now I can close this particular image I don't need it anymore okay so that is the background for this particular banner so let's go into the style sheet banner background is going to be URL and then in quotes grassfield.jpg now I need to say where do I want it it's going to be top left and do I want it to repeat no so I'll do no repeat save that I refresh and you don't see anything the reason you don't see anything is because the banner div is there but it's it's got nothing in it so it's actually got no size so what I maybe need to do is fix the the height of it like we did with the header and because it's still selected in Photoshop I can see that the height is 258 so I'm going to go back, back into my style sheet and set the height to be 258 pixels save that come back and there we go there we've got my grass banner so what's next in my image Okay, so next is my navigation bar. Now this has also got a gradient on it. But for now I'm going to take a solid colour and that's going to be AE. So what do we call that one? That is a UL. It's called main nav. So there's my background colour. I'm going to put a height on it as well. So what's the height in Photoshop? One way to select the layer in this older version, move tool, and then control click onto the layer itself. Here it is. Now if I control click that again, okay, it's still higher because there's some of it hidden in the background. So what I want to know is what's the height of it. So I'll just zoom in, go back to my regular marquee tool, and measure it out. It's 55 pixels high. So let's go with that. look at my page okay there, there it is it's got all of that in there now there is a gap between my banner and my main nav in my markup all there is is one space between the banner and the main nav I'm just going to set something I'm going to say that all divs should have no margin and no padding that will apply to the container, the head of the banner. Also, this UL, you see, main nav, main nav is not a div, it's an unordered list. So, I need to tell it that in this particular case, it should also should have no margin and no padding. I don't necessarily expect this to work, 
Oh, but it does. There we go. So that's looking quite neat and quite smart. Let's go back to our image. I'm going to go zoom tool. I'm going to hold the Alt key down. So instead of zooming in, it hold Alt key and it'll zoom out. So what's next? I've got my left and right columns, I believe. Okay, so we've got main column and secondary column. As we did before, main column and secondary column. They're both going to be float left because we want them to be side by side. And the main column Can be 65 percent, and the secondary column is going to be 35 percent. Now this should work. I'm going to give them a background for for now, so we can see where they are. And it's going to be pale yellow. And that one's going to be something else. They've got no content in for now, so we're not going to see anything. I'll put some something in. There we go. So they're working just fine. They fit perfectly in the space, and because they've got no margin, no border, and no padding, they are fitting absolutely perfectly just using those percentages. So that's great. So now I can go back and remove my colours, because I know they're working how they, how they should. So the next thing is I'm going to have my footer nav at the bottom. And what we've got in the markup is just called footer. So I'm literally working down the page from top to bottom, working down the, down the markup from top to bottom. Okay, so my footer, now it's going to have background colour, so let's snatch a colour for now. It's going to be E299.51. Remember that? E299.51. It's also going to need a height. So I'll measure that. And that is it's going to be one pixel more than that. So it's going to be 66 pixels. In reality, I don't often hard code heights on two elements. Now, can you see what's happened here? I've got my main column content and my secondary column content are being overlapped by the footer. And the reason is because these two are both floated. And because they're floated, they're not actually occupying their own space. So what I need to do is I need to tell the footer to carry on after those two have finished. The way to do that is with clear left. Because they've floated left, I'm going to do clear left. If I don't clear right, that would only clear anything that's floated right. And you see it doesn't work. Float left, clear left works. And I also want to have some space underneath my footer. So I'm a little bit more white there. And that's 22 pixels. margin bottom 22 pixels. That's not working. Why is it not working? The container should be showing up behind there. Another way of doing this, which might work, could be to put the padding in the container. And that, that has worked. So here we go, we've got 22 pixels at the bottom. Deselect, go back up. Another way to zoom in and out is to hold the control or command key and hit the plus and minus buttons. For those who want to know these things. So there we've got some basics and we've got a reasonably decent looking page. Next we're going to look at something a little bit more clever.